the first two approaches to calculating probabilities, namely the relative frequency approach and the subjective approach, only give you estimates for probabilities. They do not give you the exact probability. This third technique, which is known as the classical or equally likely approach, actually gives you an exact probability rather than an estimate. You can use the classical or equally likely approach to calculate probabilities when you're in the case where all outcomes are equally likely. Now that's not always the case and so we'll need something a little more general and that'll be the fourth technique, the axiomatic approach, but for now we'll at least take a look at this one. Here's an example. Find the probability of exactly two heads in three tosses of a fair coin. Now in this case the sample space, if you list all of the different things that can happen when you toss a fair coin three times, it turns out by the multiplication rule there are two to the third power or eight different outcomes that occur, can occur and here they are listed out heads 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 tails etc there's the eight of them well if we want p of a where the event a is getting exactly two heads then in that case it stands to reason that all eight of these would be equally likely that is to say these three right here each occur with probability one eighth so the probability of getting exactly two heads is three divided by eight. Now if you want to generalize this to more than just three tosses you know that your denominator came from over here as two to the third power and one way of thinking of how do we get the three up top well, of the three positions, there are two, two positions of the three where we're going to distribute the heads, and that'll be three choose two. Couple notes. First of all, this yields an exact probability rather than an estimate, which we were dealing with in the relative frequency and the subjective approach. Second of all, there is a weakness you are going to hit probability problems where everything is not equally likely and that's why we need still another approach, a fourth approach. The next one, P of A, is a set function. Now this is something that won't be as familiar as the usual types of functions on real numbers that you've seen in the past. What this does is the probability function takes a set A, which in this case corresponds to the event of exactly two heads and the probability will return a real number between 0 and 1. If you ever get a 0 for a particular event A, that would mean that the event is impossible. And if you ever get the other extreme, that is P of A equals 1, that would mean that the event A is certain to occur. The general form for what is known as the classical or equally likely approach which is, being, which is being developed on this slide is P of A will be the total number of elements in the sample space. In this case there are eight of them. And the numerator will be the number of outcomes that are favorable to the event A. And the event A in this case was getting exactly two heads. So three of those are favorable to A. So we got a three-eighths in that case.